Rufus, come here. Hey, look, there you are. We are all going on a family road trip this week. We're going down to um, to Cornwall, um, over to the uh, far west side of the UK. We're going there because we're working with um, EDF Energy. And this is a really, really exciting partnership because I get to drive this. This is the all-electric Tesla Model S. We've been challenged by EDF to go on a road trip with a twist. The twist is we're doing it in an all-electric car, starting from our house in Bath and stopping in Polseth, Padstow, Morganporth and Penzance. We'll be finishing the road trip in Land's End. So the plan is we're going to go down to Cornwall, we're going to meet up with a, with, a, with a production team. They're making their own video about this little road trip that we're doing while we make this kind of behind the scenes video. Before we do that, we've got to pack. Rufus, get away from the prints. There's so many toys in there for you to play with. You don't need to play with my printer. Hannah's packing all the stuff for the kids. I've got to pack all the camera gear and the editing studio and everything and get that. I don't know why I'm telling you about this. I should just go and do it and stop flapping. Anyway, um, yeah, let's go. Everyone ready? Ready. Come on, can we have a bit of decorum? <laughs> Is everybody ready to go to Cornwall? <laughs> yes, yeah. Dad! Yeah. yeah! Grayson, can I get a yes, Dad? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it, come on. Why do I not? When we found out we were doing this job, I was really excited that we were going to Land's End because there was one picture that popped up in my mind. I'm gonna show it to you guys. It's in, a, it's in a photo album, which I'm very precious about because it's a photo album of my mum. It is me, my mum and my dog and my auntie Carol at Land's End. Um, I, we went there when I was about nine and I had the bushiest eyebrows and the worst coat ever. But I thought it would be a really fun idea to recreate the picture with the boys. Yeah, just something I really wanted to do. To make these videos the way I wanna make them, you have to be so many different things. You have to be a writer, uh, an editor, a director, cinematographer, a producer, uh, presenter you name it you have to be loads of different things and I've always wondered what it would be like if I gave away some of that creative control well I'm about to find out because remember a few seconds ago when I said that EDF had this production crew that were following us on our road trip to make their own like 10 minute promotional video well they kindly said that I could use all of the footage they captured and they sent me this this is a hard drive containing 1.2 terabytes worth of footage. For context, I usually work with about three hours, two to three hours worth of footage to condense down to 20 minutes. On this hard drive is 25 hours worth of footage <laughs> from their production crew. And I have five days to turn that into this video you're about to watch. And on this hard drive is the answer to that question. Like where could, where, what's the next step of, of evolving these videos? Where could I take them if I had everything I needed? if I gave away creative control and had other people help me. So tomorrow, on Tuesday, when we go and meet the production team, you're gonna see firsthand my question that I've been asking for years be answered. Check this out. I press this little indicator bit in the back here and this opens up this little charging port and I plug it straight in, boom, like that. And in an hour's time, I'm fully charged. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about it is how cheap it is. So I'm gonna hang tight for an hour and 10 while this charges, and then um, get, get ourselves a coffee, get some food, and then carry on with the little journey. Right, I've got to stop geeking out. Can I buy this, please? Aww. <laughs> That's amazing. How much is it? Let me see. And there we go, fully charged. We've got 277 miles. That's more than enough to get us there. No. Right, no. let's go. Where are you going to, little brown mouse? Swallow that. Steph just shoved a whole boiled egg into his mouth. Ah! We just got to our hotel and I'm already in my comfy pajamas. Steph's about to get a drone shot and I've just unpacked all of the boys' things. Took my drone, took my Mavic. With my Hasselblad camera, with a polarizer filter on the lens. Mm-hmm, sexy stuff. <sighs> Packed my controller, but the wrong controller for the Mavic Air, not the right controller for this drone. Damn. Apparently though, the production team that are coming out with us on this trip, well they have a, one of the big ones, like the, the super, the Inspire ones. So I'm just gonna ask them politely if I can 
steal some of their drone shots. I think we're just going to get some room service and then get an early night because I know we have quite an early morning in the morning and we're going to head straight down to the beach with the crew which should be good fun. I'm so excited because I love this beach. It's one of the beaches that I used to go to as a kid and a teenager. But anyway, I will see you guys all. Oh, you okay? See you guys all in the morning. Good night. Bye. Good morning, guys. It's our first full day in Cornwall today, and we are currently on our way down to Polzef Beach to meet the production team and get some shots down on the beach with the boys, which should be really good fun. I absolutely love this beach, um, so I am really excited about this part of the shoot. I reckon I'm gonna get some serious camera envy. Oh yeah, you will, for sure. Mm, there Oop. it is, guys, can you see the beach? Yeah. Oh, he's just oh, taking it all in. We've just got to the beach, we're waiting for the... To the beach. To the beach. We're we're going to the beach. We just got to the beach, <laughs> waiting for the production team to come down now, uh, and meet, so we can meet all those guys. I think they're going to get some shots of us just running around and playing, and having a good time. Can you get this picture for me quickly? Yes, Thanks. hello, go on. <laughs> So if you come here, yeah. it's actually a really nice photo. If you stand here and just take a picture here. Okay, sure. What should I do? You look a bit like a twat, but I mean, what are you going to do? Take your hand down. What are you doing that for? Put your, put your hands on your like, waist. It's for a story. Put your hands on your waist. Cool. You got one, yeah? I think so. Cool, it's only for a story, honey, so you don't need to freak out about it. Looks like they've just arrived. I've been making videos for about 10 years now, and I've always filmed on Canon DSLRs. DSLRs are many things, but there's one thing that they're not. They're not cinema cameras. And I've always wondered what it would be like to film one of our videos using cinema cameras, and if it would make that much of a difference. Well, we're in luck, because the rest of this week's video has been filmed using cinema cameras. So I want you to tell me if you think it would be worth us upgrading, to taking the next step up to, sit to using cinema line cameras. I know what I think, but I just, I want to get your opinion. So yeah, anyway, pay close attention because we're going cinema style. <laughs> what the f was that? I was about to say empty your dirty London lungs, but you don't have dirty London lungs no, anymore. No, you're right. It's just like clean bath lungs. Don't empty your dirty mind. <laughs> I'm not supposed to swear in sponsored videos, so I'm going to go ahead and bleep this bit out, but I need to say it. Holy f I knew I'd have some camera envy, I was prepared for that, but this is more than envy. This has shown me an emotion I never even knew I was capable of feeling. It's both euphoria and a cold screaming emptiness. The euphoria comes from seeing this huge jump in depth of field and colour and the tones and just the overall quality. And the cold screaming emptiness, well that comes from not having a spare £30,000 knocking around to drop on a cinema camera setup. I mean just look at how creamy it looks. I'm sorry for saying creamy, I just couldn't think of a more suitable adjective. This is not about how I want our videos to look. This is how I feel they need to look. If these videos are an open letter to my family, then I want to write them with a Swiss fountain pen, not a crayon. My mind's made up. I've decided after seeing these, these shots, I'm gonna go ahead and get a cin cinema camera set up. I'm gonna do everything I can. I'm gonna sell everything I can. I'll even sell one of Hannah's kidneys if I have to, because there's, there's no going back from this. I mean, look at it. It's liquid cream. Oh God, I just said liquid cream. Do you know what? I'm so surprised that Rufus hasn't got on that surfboard yet. Yeah. Every other time we've been on a beach with surfboards, he hijacks somebody's board. <laughs> <laughs> decisions, the board or the dogs. I wish I could surf, Hannah. Yeah, so do I. What, you wish I could surf or yeah. you wish you could surf? Something it quite hot so... about surfing, guys. Yeah. It looks so much fun, doesn't it? Yeah. I... I wish I could do it, but my fear of deep water does not really mix well with yeah. surfing. Yeah, I'm always freaking out there's going to be a shark like lurking underneath me. In Cornwall? Yeah, in Cornwall. They have sharks here. There's, there's always the first time for everything, isn't there? That's what we need to do, no. Hannah. Buy, buy one of those houses over there. Oh, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Just literally just walk down every day down to the beach and That's have the a dream. surf. Isn't that the dream? Well, if you could surf, it would be. Yeah. <laughs> just flat, flail about in the water like some cumbersome old dad. If 
I ask you something, you can be a nice answer. Yeah. Do you think I'm cool? Sometimes. I used to think you were more cool when we were dating, I think. I think that's because you were trying to impress me, though. You thought I was cooler then, when we were and dating? And then you, you stopped know? trying. So I, I'm good at You wanted an honest answer. I'm good at pretending to be cool. Yeah. Hey. You can be cool. When can I be cool? When's the cool bits? Um, well, I can't give you a specific answer to that. You let me know next time, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll... Okay, next time you're being cool, I'll tell you. Mummy needs an Instagram photo. Come on, Insta husband. Am I cool? When I ask Hannah, she says sometimes, which, knowing Hannah is her way of saying, no, you're not. So how do I make her think I'm cool again now I'm balding and constantly asking her to help me look for my Gaviscon tablets? I can't be that fun-loving, carefree guy who took her for rides around London on the back of my Vespa anymore, so who's the new cool guy and how do I find him? I did some research and looked online and according to Google there are five things that make you cool. One, wear stylish shades. That's easy, I have several pairs of sunglasses, so tick. Number two is rock a leather jacket. I don't have one, but I have a really nice blazer from Moss Bros, so consider that a tick. Get jeans that fit well. My friends always say that Steph always looks like the guy who buys ripped jeans from the cool section of River Island, so I can get a tick on that one too. Add some stubble. I'm already invested with the beard, so double tick on that one. And five, know the rules and break them. The rules are in this house that we don't touch the kids' snacks. Well, you know what? Fuck the rules. Steph, you're not eating the kids' snacks again, are you? I may tick all the boxes, but if my wife doesn't think I'm cool, then what does it matter? She's the only person I need to impress, and if she doesn't think I'm the coolest guy she's ever met, then what's the point in living anymore? I don't know how I'll do it, but I'll make sure she finds me cool again. I'll do whatever it takes. zap map which looks like this and it basically shows you where all the charging points are for the car this is obviously where we are here and then if i zoom out you can see all the charging points in cornwall we're fully charged at the moment but if we needed to stop and charge there's tons of places we can go to come on then surprise me with a nice playlist all right driving playlist awkward let's just skip that one <laughs> After meeting the production crew at Poles F Beach and getting some shots, we drove here to Padstow Harbour. We have made it to Padstow. Padstow is a charming working fishing port surrounded by sandy beaches. Our favourite thing to do whenever we come here is just to get some fish and chips and just watch the everyday ebb and flow of harbour life pass us by. There's loads of really cool independently owned shops and there's galleries and some really nice restaurants selling fresh locally produced food. I'm surprised we haven't been um, mugged by seagulls yet. I feel like I've been mugged by a baby instead. <laughs> He's basically eaten all mine. If you do ever make it to Poles F, you have to get yourself a pasty. Just save it for dinner if you fill up on fish and chips. They're famous for their pasties, and once you start the chewing process, you'll realise why. We're only here for an hour or so, then we're off to our next stop, which is just enough time to have some fish and chips, get a pasty for later, and amble around like a couple of dead-eyed tourists for a while. It's become this tradition of ours now. Uh, to go to this little independent bookshop in, in Padstow called the Padstow Bookseller and uh, they've got really nice quirky little books in here um, so I've got a couple of little poetry books for Grayson to read out for the video but um, yeah it's a nice little tradition that we seem to have picked up British road trip is that you literally have to pack for all seasons. You have to pack for heat wave, you have to pack for torrential rain, you have to pack, pack for like bitterly cold winds. It's like you're time travelling through all the seasons. Yeah. Once a little mouse took a big step into the woods. A fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. What? What's a gruffalo? 
Why did you say so? He has terrible jaws and terrible tongue. I don't actually mind that it's raining, do you? No. I feel like it's the Devon girl in me because when I was little and we had a dog, no matter what happened, every day after school we would take her to the beach and it could be like freezing cold and torrential rain and we would still always go to the beach. So I actually kind of learned to enjoy it. The owl saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. Sorry, but I'm having tea with a buffalo. We're at our last pit stop of the day. It's raining, but we're ploughing through. The crew have got an umbrella and ponchos <laughs> all over everything. Grayson's wearing his lobster costume, which I'm really happy about because I bloody love that costume. Rufus is just happy that he's out past bedtime. And yeah, we're gonna get some, um, some footage. We've come down uh, to meet some guy who's uh, gonna do some uh, VR stuff with us. I think he's gonna like film us down here in, v in like in, in 360, and then tomorrow he's gonna like import that all and make it into some sort of VR experience. And we're gonna go and check out what the VR experience is. We're gonna meet him in a second. He's just asked us to wait here while uh, they set everything up. So yeah, beautiful beach, man. Absolutely stunning beach. Kyle. Oh, Hello, mate. How's it going? How you doing? Hello. Nice to meet you. Hey, Hello. Kyle. Nice, nice to meet you. How are you guys? You right? Yeah, so my name's Kyle from VR Cornwall, um, part of Down South Point of View, and uh, we're actually doing a project getting 360 images from all over Cornwall. Uh, we're putting it together so that people can come and view them in virtual reality. Kyle said he hadn't heard of us before, which isn't that surprising. They don't have much internet or culture for that matter in places like Cornwall. When I told him a bit about what we did, he literally said, and I quote, wow, that sounds cool. Thanks, Kyle, but sadly my wife doesn't agree. She no think I'm cool anymore, I said in a funny Jamaican accent to lighten the severity of the admission. Really, he said, why's that? If I knew that, I would not be opening up to a man I've only just met. I said again, this time in more of a Welsh sounding accent. Carl looked a bit concerned and awkwardly chuckled. I need to eat something before I go. I'm about to go surfing now. Try to surf. Embarrass myself in the water. Flail around like an like out of control dad who's desperate to be cool. To be honest with you, being thrown headfirst into an ice cold ocean over and over for the best part of two hours is preferable to uh, dealing with <laughs> two young children. Hannah agrees. I think she'd rather throw herself in the ocean than. <laughs> and then deal with these little rugrats. It's like an eco hotel we're staying in, which basically means nothing works. Natural shampoo derived from natural stuff that doesn't clean your hair. <laughs> oh, Hannah's doing natural shampoo, but it didn't work. Anyway, Hannah's gonna take Rufus and Grayson to an eco soft play. Is it? Which is probably just gonna be a hay bale. All right then, let's go surfing. Okay, got the wetsuit on. I've told the guy to give me one of the semi-pro boards so I can pop some there. Uh, sick moves. I haven't really, I've, I've asked for the biggest, foamiest board they have. You can pretty much stand on this board and go for a little stroll. <laughs> it's that big and foamy. Right, anyway, let's do this. Steph is surfing, so I am gonna take the kiddies 
um, to the little soft play. Sorry, excuse Ruth, he's desperate to get out of this room. Um, I'm going to take the kiddies to the soft play that's in our hotel. Do you think they're going to be able to do it by the end of the day? 100 Yeah? You reckon? Mate, look okay. at you, you've got an athletic body, the boards are... <laughs> Twice yeah. the size of a normal surfboard, you've got no excuses there. Great, right, mate, thing. great. I like that athletic body, <laughs> athletic body yeah, comment, mate. Definitely, <laughs> definitely not cutting that bit out. <laughs> this is Pete. He owns a small surf school down on Morganporth Beach called King Surf. Hopefully, by the end of the day, I'll be the king of surf. You're better than that. Pete is going to show me the ropes and try to explain the physics behind surfing before unleashing me on the ocean. To break the ice, I asked Pete if he'd ever met an A-list celebrity or vlogger before. He said he'd never met an A-lister before, but he was a huge fan of a vlogger called Cassie Neistash or something, who's apparently some bloke from New York that wears sunglasses inside and films people recognising him on the street constantly. Pete's eyes widened as he asked if I'd ever met him. Sorry, Pete. Never even heard of the guy. I'm more into my artsy film directors and stuff. Me too, said Pete. Yorgos Lanthimos is my current favourite. No, no, Peter Middleton and James Spinney. Who's yours? I had to think about it for a while. S Steven Spielberg, I said. Oh, right, said Pete. Yeah, I didn't like what he did with Ready Player One, if I'm honest, or the BFG. I felt like it was time to change the subject, so I asked him if he'd had any gnarly riptides recently, which is surface slang for something or other. Anyway, Pete, if you're watching, I'd like to retract that. My favourite director isn't Steven Spielberg, it's... I meant to say it's James Cameron, Pete. Now teach me how to surf. So that is like, that's the basics of surfing. I opened up to Pete on our surf lesson while we waited for the swells to pick up or whatever. I told him that I was afraid that I was losing my edge, losing my cool. He told me I looked like a cool guy and not to worry, then tried to change the subject back to surfing techniques. Hold on, Pete. You think I'm cool, I said. Yeah, he said, you seem like a cool guy. This wave might be a good one. It's just my wife Hannah doesn't think I am anymore, at least not like she used to. You better start paddling if you want this one, Pete said. Would you mind telling her you think I'm a cool guy when she picks me up later, Pete? I didn't have the chance to hear Pete's reply because suddenly I was knocked over by a colossal wave and tumbled around like a cold lost dad totally out of his depth. While I was tumbling, I had some time to ask myself an important question. Why do I surf? What's actually fun about trying to stand up on a bit of polystyrene that's floating on an unpredictable body of undulating cold salty liquid that's literally teeming with gross looking life? This photo shows a random splash of seawater magnified 25 times. I mean look at that horrible stuff. So let me ask myself again, why do I surf? The only way I'll ever know is if I keep trying and don't give up. If I keep swallowing these little guys, if I keep falling and flailing and flapping, maybe then one day I'll feel its magic and instantly fall madly and deeply in love. Maybe then Hannah will hear me scream with joy from the beach. She'll look up and see me gracefully carving the waves with a huge grin exposing my extremely narrow bite and say, look boys, there's your dad. Which one, mum? The cool one. Why do I surf? I don't. I try to surf. sort of managed to stand up for, for like <laughs> five, ten seconds. Um, but we're in a bit of a rush, so we have to go to the next location. So I didn't get as long as I would have liked. So I need another hour with Peter to, uh, to nail it. But we um, we had a great time out there. Good chat. He was killing it. He's, 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 he's been a bit uh, complimentary there. I was, I was, <laughs> no way I was killing it. I was awkwardly standing up and falling off a board over and over. <laughs> Did you win your wetsuit? I didn't win my wetsuit, mate. No, I didn't. <laughs> After I scrubbed off all of the plankton and crab excrement and just general disappointment, we checked out of the Eco Hotel, loaded up the car and drove towards our next destination. We're going to meet Kyle from VR Cornwall, the guy we met yesterday on the beach who took all those high-res photos of us. His VR studio is in Penzance, so that's where we're going now. We've just arrived in Penzance. Ah, oh, yeah. Are you ready, guys? We yes. are ready. I'm just um, eyeing up for an Insta shot around here. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's really cute. It's your first time in Penzance, little man. 
<laughs> Wandering through the town's back streets, you'll stumble across shops selling anything from modern art to vintage books and antiques, which all adds a slightly bohemian feel to the town. Anyway, we're bored of all this reality nonsense, so it's time we stepped into some virtual reality. Kyle stitched all the photos of us he took on the beach last night and gave us a 360 degree view of Morgan Beach from above. I took Kyle to one side and said, come on Kyle, if you're going to put me in your virtual world where possibilities are infinite and the basic laws of physics are laughed out of town, at least give me a virtual wife that thinks I'm virtually cool. You know better than anyone how much I need this right now, Kyle. Kyle said that isn't something he can do and asked if I wanted to play the Iron Man game for a while instead. If I'm honest, sometimes our job can feel a bit isolating. So to be able to spend a few days in the company of these amazingly talented production team was something I felt like Hannah and I really needed. All of these guys, without even knowing it, answered a question that I've been asking myself for years now. How far can you go with making these videos? They showed me the next step of what's possible if you have everything you need. Anyway, sadly, it was all about to come to an end as we made it all the way to our final stop, Land's End. You can't come all the way to Land's End and leave without the obligatory photo under the Land's End sign, which you may notice has our name on it. At first I assumed they put it there to drum up a bit more tourism to the area, but then the director told me she had to pay some old man £10 to put it there temporarily for the closing shot they needed. I was in a good mood so I told the old man he could leave it there for a few days if he liked and I'd turn a blind eye to the blatant copyright infringement. I went in for a fist bump to seal the deal but he just looked a bit confused and asked if I was okay. We made it to Land's End. We got the picture. You want me to take a picture of you? We got the picture of me and the boys where me and my mum sat all those years ago. So yeah, that's the end of our little trip. There was just enough time left in the day for one last pit stop. It was coming up to golden hour, so we decided to wrap up the shoot on Senan Cove Beach, which was only a few miles away. come to Sandon Cove to watch the sunset and say that Grayson can fly his kite. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know what I learned on this trip besides the fact I need a cinema camera in my life and there's loads of gross stuff in each drop of seawater? I learned that it doesn't matter if someone thinks you're cool or not. What matters is that person doesn't mind that you're not cool.
do you want one last play in the sea before we go? 